Hello and welcome to this tutorial on switches and flooding frames. This is good stuff to know because it really gets into the functionality of a switch, what, what a switch actually does in certain scenarios. And specifically here, it's related to learning MAC addresses and forwarding frames. So if you haven't yet, check out the tutorial on how switches forward frames and how switches learn MAC addresses. It's related to both of those in some ways. So we're going to take a look quickly at the MAC address table and the basics of a forwarding of a forwarding frames. And then we'll jump into exactly what is flooding and figure out why certain frames are flooded. OK, so let's get started. If we look at an example of a switch forwarding a frame, we'll uncover a particular type of problem. And the resolution to that problem will lead us into a discussion about flooding frames. So let's take an example where PC2 wants to send a frame to PC1. So PC2 sources the frame, puts it on the wire. It hits the switch. The switch then consults its MAC address table. And it sees that the MAC address for PC1, the destination MAC address, is in fact listed, along with a port of where to find it. So now the switch knows I need to send the frame out FA01, and the job of forwarding the frame is complete. But what happens when PC1, let's say, wants to send a frame to PC3? Now we can see PC3 is not listed in the MAC address table. In fact, the MAC address table only has one entry in this example. So PC1 sources the frame, puts it on the wire, hits the switch. Again, the switch consults the MAC address table. And this time, it doesn't find um, a listing for the destination MAC, 3333. So what happens? Well, this is the problem. And this particular frame is called an unknown unicast frame. So unicast traffic is traffic destined for just one device, one host. And here, since the MAC, the MAC address table doesn't have a listing for 333, the switch doesn't know what to do with it. So an unknown unicast frame is now at the switch. And this leads us into flooding and why we need flooding and what flooding does. Well, we have our unknown unicast frame. And again, that is the name of a frame when the destination is not known. And so the, f the switch needs to come up with a way to address this problem. It needs to find that destination. Where does, where does the destination live? So that's where flooding comes in. And flooding is really, you can think of it as a process of discovery by the switch. So when the switch receives that unknown unicast frame, it's going to then determine it doesn't know where the destination is. And what it does is it sends the frame out every interface connected to the switch. So it floods it out every connected port. It's important to note it doesn't send it back on the port that it received it on. So in our last example, when PC1 sourced the frame, the unknown unicast, the switch would get it and it would send it out the other two ports trying to find the destination. It would not send it back to the source. It just wouldn't make any sense. So that's the process, process of discovery. It's sent out every connected port. And it does this because the idea is the device, the destination device, is going to reply. And then the switch is going to learn from that reply where, which interface, the destination is located. And then it, then it can go ahead and it can complete the process of forwarding the frame. So let's take an, a, a look at an example to uh, flush this out a little bit. Let's use PC1 again as our source, and it's going to send it to PC3. So the frame is created, sent on the wire. The switch looks at the MAC address table, realizes it doesn't have an entry for the destination MAC address of PC3. So this is where flooding comes in. The unknown unicast frame needs to be determined, and the destination needs to be found. So the switch will then flood this frame out every port that's connected to it. So both PC2 and PC3 are going to receive a copy of that frame. PC2 is going to determine that the frame is not destined for it. It will look at the Ethernet frame at the destination MAC address and realize it's not the same. So PC2 is going to ignore that frame. It'll just drop it. PC3, the proper destination for that frame, will accept the frame and it's going to reply. And now, based on that reply, 
the switch can update its MAC address table. Because remember, that reply is going to be a frame. And in the frame, we have the header, the, the body, the data, and the trailer. Well, in that header, we have the source MAC address and the destination MAC address. So the reply is going to have the source MAC address of 333 in there. And the switch is, is expecting some kind of traffic from the destination. And so now it says, ah, I know where 333 is. I can now update my MAC address table. And I know I saw that reply on FA03. Now my MAC address table is complete. Anyone else who now sends a frame to PC3, the switch knows where to find it. And that's the, the outcome of flooding the frame out all ports. The switch now has located PC3, has updated its MAC address table based on the reply to the flood by PC3. It's important to note that flooding can happen quite often because a MAC address table uses something called an inactivity timer. And what happens here is when a MAC address is learned and it's updated in the MAC address table, a value is set to it, a little timer, and it starts at zero and then it starts incrementing. And if the MAC address table ever gets too full and it needs to add new entries, the MAC address table will erase the oldest entries. Or sometimes at a certain point it says, well, this is too old, I still have room, but this entry is too old, I'm just going to delete it. So that's the process of keeping the MAC, ad MAC address table fresh. So if 20 minutes were to go by and there was no traffic from PC3, perhaps that would be flushed from the MAC address table. And this process of flooding might ha actually have to happen again in order to locate it. So this memory, this MAC address table, is, is dynamically built. And it, it's, it's almost a living, breathing thing. It's, it's constantly refreshed and updated. It's also important to note, the last important note, is that in addition to unicast, unknown unicast frames, there are two other types of frames which are broadcast or flooded, uh, rather, out all the ports on a switch. The first one is a broadcast frame, and that's meant for everything within a particular subnet or VLAN. And then you also have multicast frames, and those are destined to usually a subset of devices on the network. Both of those types of traffic, broadcast and multicast, are flooded out multiple ports on a switch. So in addition to unknown unicast, those two types are also included when you talk about flooding frames. To summarize what we went over today, we know that switches use the MAC address table to determine where to find the destination MAC address. Where is it connected on the switch? Sometimes, however, the switch is not going to have an entry for the destination MAC address. And if it doesn't have it, it needs to flood the frame out. This unknown unicast gets flood at, flooded out every connected port. And the idea being that the proper destination was going to respond to that, it's going to reply to that. And then based on that reply, the switch can look at the source MAC address and the port that it was received on. And then, then it will update its MAC address table. And that is the benefit, the outcome of flooding a frame. We also talked briefly about an inactivity timer, which sets a value, an incrementing value, to each MAC address entry. And those get timed out eventually to keep the table fresh. And finally, we know that there are two other types of frames or traffic in addition to unknown unicast frames that are flooded. And that's the broadcast frame and the multicast frame. So there you have it. That concludes this tutorial on flooding frames. Thanks for watching.